Hello there and welcome to the channel with me, Simon, your budget Joe Swift. And in this video, I am gonna show you how to create a exotic garden on a budget. Now there are two ways to approach this. And that's in the first one is to uh, know where are the best places to buy your plants without being ripped off by high retail prices. And the second is how to grow, produce and propagate your own plants for pretty much free. So when looking for plants, most people's uh, first port of call is your local garden centre. And uh, in most cases, that is going to be the most expensive place to buy your plants. So you, you need to think a little bit outside the box. So if you keep your eye out, you will find that probably the cheapest plants that you will find are going to be your local supermarket, big supermarkets that is. But it's not just the only place. Go online, see if you have any specialist local nurseries, check those out, they're gonna be very good. But don't forget to consider those specialist nurseries that only retail online, including places like Etsy and uh, eBay. Now all these places are really, really good places and you can find not only some fantastic specimens and, and, and plants that you wouldn't find in your garden centre, but the prices are absolutely spot on. Now this second part is where things start to get interesting and that's where we start using very simple propagation techniques to produce your own plants for free. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna quickly take you around the garden and show you which plants you can propagate and which techniques to use. And I'm only gonna be showing you the ones that are super easy so you'll have no problems doing it whatsoever. Right, now the first technique we're gonna use is the cuttings in the old glass of water trick. And these are the best ones to do that with. Check out this fantastic ground cover specimen. It is um, Tradescantia silomontana. I think old gimbal's going a bit weird there. Um, super hardy, ground spreading, hardly anything touches it. Tolerate for heat, drought, freezing cold temperatures. All you do, take a four inch cut in, take off the lower leaves, in the water. And here we have a lovely coleus, superbly colourful tropical effect plant that absolutely thrives in the shade. You can't put it in the sun because it will scorch. Again, take yourself three, four inch cutting, take off the lower leaves, stick it in the glass of water. Now this is a salvia, not yet in flower, although this one here has got a lovely big flower bud on it. But again, three to four inch cutting, Take your cup with all these just below the node and remove the uh, the bottom three quarters of leaves and any big leaves. And what you do with that? Oh, let's guess, in the water. So straight off the bat, you've got three genuses, probably about a good 50 cultivars that you can grow as simple as this for absolutely free. All you gotta do, put it in water, wait one or two weeks for it to pop into root and then carefully pot that on without damaging those new roots. Nicotiana sylvestris, the woodland tobacco from the Americas. Oh, look at these brown ones, say that, so I'm making it look messy, but look at that. What a lovely tropical effect plant, and surprisingly hard. Not only will the parent plant survive year on year, they grow so easily from seed. All you need to do is wait for these seed pots in here to turn brown. All the seeds will fall out on your hand. Put it on top of a pot of seed tray, it will grow automatically. It requires no skills. And what about this little lovely Ricinus communis? This is the red form called Impala. The hotter it gets, the more sunlight it gets on it, the redder it goes. And it's even going to produce its own seeds for me for free. What a fantastic plant. Anyway, very, very easy to propagate from seeds. Put these in a heated propagator, they'll germinate in a week. I mean, a week is ridiculous. So easy, you've got to love that one. Now this is a great little thing. It's uh, Datura inoxa. It's got gorgeous white flowers. It's not in flower yet. I grew this from seed. Grew really easily. I just put a couple of seeds in a pot, left it in the greenhouse, watered it. Two, three weeks later, they started germinating. Very, very easy. Difficult to get the seed though, so I reckon you're gonna look at eBay or Etsy, you certainly won't find that in your local supermarket or garden center. That's not bad for a little dahlia, is it? It's got a gorgeous sun 
gold colour flower and these lovely bronze uh, leaves. What cultivar is it? Well, I've no idea. And do you know why? Because these actually self-seeded. If you leave some of the old seed heads on over the autumn or winter, they'll drop to the floor and you'll start finding them germinating in the ground in the following spring. I've probably got a good half dozen of, of our own cultivars, unnamed, just from letting them do their own thing naturally. Now one of the very best ways to get uh, free plants is to uh, propagate using division on herbaceous plants. And the reason why it's a really good one because you, you take one plant, you split it, the roots into three sections, and then you have three plants immediately. So you just plant those out where you want them to go. And I'll just walk you around and show you which ones we've done with that. Not there, but down here, giant hosta. Now we've got several of these, and we have several of these because, oh, gimbal gone weird. Several of these because we divide these uh, in, this, in the winter, really. Once, uh, once the leaves have dropped off, I tend to wait, I tend to wait until the new buzz are just showing. Then I lift it and I cut it in half or cut it into three, depending on how many want. But there you go, buy one of these and you'll have them for the rest of your life. And the same goes for these. Canna lilies. Wait for them to die back, lift them up, separate them, plant them around. And they're pretty tough, so you don't need to protect them, bring them in. Well, at least you don't where we live on the south coast, they're very easy. And this little fella here, air room lily, I'll chuck a little picture of the flower up so you know what we're looking at. Again, in the winter, lift it up, separate it, and uh, you'll have many, many of these, a brilliant form. And for my last two lift and divide specimens, you've got any formium, look at that, that's a gorgeous variety there, lift and divide, and if you haven't thought about it before, check out this hardy banana. You can see the young shoots coming out the ground there. In the winter, lift and divide. All right, don't worry, we are nearly at the end. And one of the last things I'm going to do is hardwood cuttings on fuchsias. Uh, we'll do a video about this later on in the year when the time is right. But you take yourself a good uh, six inch uh, hardwood cutting, um, put that in the ground, leave about an inch on the top, don't do anything, and then wait until the spring and you should start seeing some shoots coming through. Euphorbias are a great genius, uh, genius, <laughs> genius for excellent spring effect. And you can take uh, late summer cuttings or semi ripe cuttings in the spring, and uh, you, you won't get 100% pass rate, but you pile it yourself up about six of these, you probably get one or two that will take. And again, you know, it's a little bit harder, but you still get a free euphorbia. Well, that should get you going. That's a, that's a good selection of plants that you can really build up your stocks in the garden to give a wonderful exotic effect in your cold, hardy, tropical effect garden. But if you have any other ideas or some excellent plants that are easy to grow, you know, and any really good ideas in order to help people produce these exotic gardens, because let's be honest, they're not cheap to grow, um, then leave that in the comments anyway. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.